See, it ain't no police. Police don't exist anymore. You call the police, you get ignored. I guess the police does some protection that we couldn't even afford. 911, that number ain't in my memory bank no more. It's an emergency. I'm gonna call on my Lord. Yeah, I went into the court. You might as well tell Jesus to read me my rights. Cause if I die tonight, at least they know what they was killing me for. I grew up in Inglewood, man. I'm from Inglewood, Cali. Culver City. Watts, California. South Central Los Angeles. Oakland, California. South LA, the second district. Born and raised in uh, LA. Compton to be exact. And I'm out here, man, front lawn. I woke up to the video, and just like a whole bunch of us woke up to the video. And it was painful. And it's a pain that's going to stick for a long time. I was horrified. In fact, uh, I took my credit card out and bought a ticket to uh, Minnesota. Uh, immediately, and I was there with the family and the community leaders there. I was so upset. I was out of words. It's, you keep, you just mad. It's one that's all too repetitive, and it was disgusting. It was disheartening, and it, uh, it actually made me afraid that people would become numb because of how repetitive this is. I was angry. I was saddened. But I said, we can't do that anymore. We have to come out and we have to be a part of the movement. And that's why I'm here. I'm here for the movement. I'm here to make change. I'm here to stop what hasn't been working in our neighborhoods, in our communities. The first response is anger. And we turn that anger into passion. We turn that passion into discipline and organization. And that's how we got this here today. It's in my flesh, bro. Right here. You know what I mean? Report for duty, y'all. Stand up. Stand for something fall for anything West. That's all I got to say. You know what I mean? Back. This is my house. This is my hood. Right? Like I said, we from Black in L.A. And uh, I'm trying to bring the, bring the knowledge to the youth. Right? We're trying to bring the Crips and the Bloods together. Every religion, every black man, woman, and child, we're going to all be together. And we're going to rise from this, man. I'm so proud of everybody that's participating in the marches and everything. But now we got to take it to the next level. And if my folk are out here, I want to be out here with them. This is big, and this makes me very proud. It ain't just black people. It's everybody. It's the whole America, all walks of life. And it feels so good to me, man, to see all kind of people fighting for the black woman and the black man in America. All over the world, they fighting for us. So we got to make this last, baby. We got to make this last. I mean, you have to be out here. I'm a black person. I got to represent. I got to fight for injustice and police brutality and this madness. I can't shouldn't be this way. We're trying to help my brothers out, you know, with my presence. I'm here today to unify with my community. This is organized by black people for black people. There was a ride, a walk, a march all around Leimert Park, the center, center and cultural hub of Los Angeles for black people, historic Leimert Park district. But black people have made this community what it is. Every time that there's been a loss of life. Every time there's been some type of uh, impact upon the black community, they have come here in a place where now it's caged off. So our struggle to change the name to Africa Town is very, 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 uh, you know, still ongoing, and uh, we, we're going to succeed. Anybody that brings it to our community will be met with discipline and love. And when we bring ours, it's going to be out of love. It might be hard love, but it's going to be out of love. It all starts with kindness. It all starts with fairness. And racism is never, never born. This is tough. This is tough. My mother marched. My grandmother marched. Now it's my turn to march. And we're not marching alone. We're marching with the world. And that's a beautiful thing because now they have to shut up and listen. We are going to train. We are going to get prepared. We're going to exercise. We're going to get our bodies right. MMA, martial arts. We're going to acquire our firearms. We're going to train. And we're going to be legal, responsible gun owners. And we're going to police ourselves. The nation has arms to protect themselves. We've been under siege. And we're not even talking about the history of the millions of Africans that they killed before we even got here. We don't have a choice but to have a militant arm in the black family. We don't have that choice. We're calling for 
asked the black state legislatures to introduce a bill to allow for open carry of long guns. We, we feel and understand that when disciplined black men in particular can be in our communities and protect our communities, we will solve the problems. We're no longer asking the police to solve the problems. We're no longer asking the government to solve the problems. Yeah. All we're asking them for is the ability to solve our own problems. Yeah. We need to stop it. We need to change our school systems. We need to teach them to be kind. We need to teach them that we are equal. We all know in the hood, when the bully whooped your ass for two, three years, the only way you got the bully off of you was beating his ass down. Now, am I wrong? I know I'm not wrong. This is the same principled reality. If we don't figure that out, all we're gonna do is watch them kill our kids and be fucking marching again. We have to either do economic strategics, which we're horrible at, but like my brother spoke on with our envy of one another, or we gotta straight out go get their ass. And ain't nobody ready to go get nothing. So we have to go the, the, the economic route. We will only, only, no matter how uh, difficult it is, we will only spend our money in communities and in businesses that support our community. This is life because this is how we live daily. This flag represents us. It's not something we put on and take off. This is who we are. For others, it's a trend. This is everyday life and it's real. So I was here for the 92 riots and you know, we got to do better. I love what I'm seeing, like people coming together, positive things, not tearing up our neighborhood, like going to other places, doing stuff peaceful, that they got the support of the city council and the local police office. It's beautiful. All this came about, brothers had an idea to bring some brothers together. We appreciate all the love from all the other communities, but we wanted some time for us to come together, love on each other, heal on each other, and that's why we had to bring this right to the heart of the black community in L.A. I started my run club two years ago just to get, you know, people, uh, my friends, my family, my community on the road to just better health, you know, people from underserved communities like South Central. Because where we come from, running is pretty much non-existent. So Bikes Over Banging is inspired and it started uh, in 2013. Um, it actually was, it stemmed from the, my lifestyle growing up and having a bike in front of me and that being my motivation to do positive things uh, with my life. And it was kind of the carrot on the stick that helped me motivate myself. You know, my dad helped me, uh, will use it to motivate me, and I use that same concept to help motivate our youth. And um, I started as a, a nonprofit so that I can give back to my community. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.